Hi everybody, Elliot here. Just thought I would show you my electrical tools that I have for when I do jobs for myself and for my family. I shall start with this toolbox here and I shall first show you inside the two top compartments. In the left hand compartment we have some sleeving of various types, mainly earth sleeving and some neutral sleeving and a bit of line sleeving. This is just for quick access if I need some in a pinch. I keep my main sleeving in a separate toolbox in my shed. Here we have some self algamating tape, although this is the plumbing variety and thus it is not electrically graded, although I do keep it in here as I find it useful for general DIY purposes. Here we have some blanks for consumer units slash distribution boards as well as some candle wax what's ended up in here for some reason as well as some 75mm plate screws. Now I tend to buy plate screws in the longest length that I can find and then just cut them down to the size that I require as I always find I never have a plate screw long enough to reach the back box that I'm trying to screw the accessory to so I just buy the longest length that I can in this case I think these are 75mm In the right hand top compartment we have my thermal couple for my multimeter as well as the adapter for this and the adapter to test transistors with my multimeter that I will show you a bit later in the video. Here we have my quick start guide for my socket tester what again I will show you later in the video. We have a pack cutter in here from Rawlson what cuts copper pipe from 3 to 22 millimeter Again, not really for electrical uses, but nonetheless, I find it useful to keep it in here for quick access. We have a BC to ES lamp adapter. Again, not something that I use very often, but still, I have it in here for if I ever need to access it quickly. And then lastly, we have a mini Stanley slash X-Acto knife, along with some spare blades. And that pretty much concludes what I've currently got in my two compartments of my main electrical toolbox. And I shall next show you what is inside the top tray. Now in the top tray we have a variety of tools here. Firstly we have my dialog socket breakout so I can easily plug my various pieces of test equipment into the socket. Um, from Dialog, nothing special really, so just a basic socket breakout. Here we have my QTEC um, Loop Check 107 socket tester, as I said I would show you. Now I shall zoom in and show you that a bit closer, if I can actually move it into shot like so. There you go. And it has a basic socket tester feature as well as, of course, um, loop test and the RCD and polarity check features. Here we have my LED Lenser rechargeable LED torch that has three brightness settings and has a focusable beam. At its brightest setting, it is 10 watts and lasts two hours to the specification on the sheet. And to recharge it, it is simply magnetically clips onto the recharging cradle what plugs into a standard USB port. So, very good this torch is and I like it a lot. So, highly recommend it if you want a good rechargeable LED torch, go and get the LED Lenser P7R. Next we have a basic plug-in power meter, what can measure the typical stuff you'd expect such as voltage, current, power, frequency, power factor, etc. And can also show you how much stuff is costing to run based on the cost per kilowatt hour what you enter into the meter. Here we have my AC clamp meter, the Handyman Tech 775, that can measure currents between 0.1 milliamp and 200 amps. Now, I got this meter specifically the reason that it's got a 200 milliamp range so it can measure very low currents in the increments of 0.1 milliamp 
Um, very useful for detecting earth leakage, so highly recommended. And it's also got a light up display and a hold and max feature. Here we have my GS38 compliant voltage tester that also has a phase rotation meter built into it and it's got a simple continuity test function. These caps are 4mm but they unscrew to expose a shot probe where you can then slot the rubber caps over them to make them GS38 compliant with a 2mm exposed tip. I shall screw that back on here now. Um, it measures voltages AC and DC from 12, 24, 36, 50, 120, 230, 400 and 690 volts and they are the actual increments on the LEDs. Here we have my dialog no contact voltage detection stick. What well, simply buzzes like so when it detects voltages um, on live cables, although it's important to note you should never use these to prove dead, you can get false positives. So, while these are useful for making sure a cable is live and is in fact um, active and can be useful for detecting breaks in cables, they are not suitable for detecting whether something is dead. Here we have an old insulation resistance meter that I got several years ago. Simply, it's got 500, 250 and 1000 volts range, so 250, 500 and 1000 volt range. I've now got a proper Mega MFT1730 multifunction tester, so I don't use this much anymore, but nonetheless I keep it in here anyway. Got an old, um, another sort of voltage detector with a little flathead screwdriver again. Should probably throw this out really as I never ever use it but nonetheless having a small flat screwdriver when you need it is useful. We've got a drill bit in here what shouldn't be in here and I'll in fact put it back in my drill case when I go up to the shed next. And we have a Draper um, infrared thermometer that of course has a laser pointer that you may or may not be able to see in the video and it measures both in centigrade as well as Fahrenheit and then lastly in the top tray we have a still um, moisture meter that also acts as a thermometer but I think the batteries they have have gone flat on this and that concludes the top tray obviously you've got various miscellaneous things like jelly crimps what have fallen in here as well as a small allen key that have somehow ended up in here but that concludes what's in the top tray of my main electrical toolbox. So to start with I have my carrying pouch for my LED lens torch that I showed you earlier. So it is a carrying pouch for this. Again the torch model number is P7R from LED Lensa. I have a basic um, scientific calculator from Casio. I have my lamp holder breakout for when I'm conducting um, system loop impedance measurements as well as line to neutral impedance measurements. It's got ES, GU10, SES, BC and SBC um, adapters so I can simply plug into a bayonet connector and easily plug my test leads in. Next I have a basic network tester. As I do quite a bit with networks and uh, patch panels, I simply have this for testing cables. It slides off like so and you plug one end into one end of the cable and the other end into the other end and then when you turn it on it will flash through and show you if all the pairs are connected and whether they are connected in the right order. It has an RJ45 and an RJ11 connector on each um, part so it can test RJ45 and RJ11 cables although it's worth noting RJ45 connectors are officially known as APHC connectors. Next up I have some insulation tape 
Um, I also have a black wheel somewhere, although I seem to have misplaced that. Here we have some cable clips of uh, varying types, some grey ones for TNA. I think we've got 2.5mm and 1mm or 1.5mm clips as well as some round clips in both the black and white variety. Got some more cable clips here in the box. Uh, little black clips for telephone wire. In the next box along I've got a variety of connectors mainly Wego and traditional screw type terminal connectors. So I've got like, Wego lever connectors the sort of push type Wego connectors as well as you know the conventional terminal block. This box is a bit of a mismatch it's got some um, butt connectors, butt clip connectors, some uh, cable clips for the shotgun cable, what is used for satellite TV in this country, um, as well as some clips for fluorescent lights that I bought that came with them, like the slimline fluorescent lights that go under kitchen cabinets. And then in this bag here, I've got some rubber grommets for metal back boxes as well as some just general purpose F connectors for screwing onto satellite cables so I need to really take them rubber grommets and put them in their own compartment but nonetheless they're in here so that is for the actual um, these little boxes the main part of the store story down here I have my multimeter which is no doubt seen in a previous video of mine so I won't say too much, but it's manual ranging and of course commercial, all the stuff you'd expect like current voltage, frequency, capacitance, etc. Here we have a test lead that I got with an old meter that I bought a long time ago. I've kept it simply so I can have an easy point to attach on the earth when I plug it into an appliance. So I can plug it into, let's say, a um, old fashioned mains kettle or a disco light for example and thus I've got a nice easy earth point to attach to. Again, another sort of thing I made, just an old cable that I cut in half and attached a three lever Wego connector to the end of. Similarly, just a old cable that I made again, just standard formula to banana jacks and these have got fuses inside, what I believe are rated at 10 amps and then what I do have in here what I quite like is I have formerly to banana jacks but with the pass through option so I can you know I can plug these into my multimeter or other piece of test equipment and then still have the jacks free to plug other stuff into so I can plug these into my multimeter and then I can of course I can plug my j uh, 38 voltage prover into these ones here so Again, just something I made that is useful. Here I have some um, alligator clips. Clips? Alligator clips. Crocodile clips, should I say, for my cheap insulation resistance tester that I bought a long time ago, what I showed you earlier that was in the top tray. And then lastly, I have a pen what extends and retracts so I can like make markings on the ceiling if I want to or point at stuff. Um, and that pretty much concludes what is inside my main electrical toolbox. Now, I was going to cover my other electrical accessories in this video, like my Mega MFT 1730 multifunction tester, but due to the video length, I'll cover those in a separate video in the future. But um, can I say thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below. So, okay, until next time, can I say thanks for watching, and goodbye.